Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to Cybersecurity TV. Uh, this week we're going to continue with our Access Filter Bypass series. And uh, this is a very short video about the escaping the parenthesis. And we all know uh, how important the parenthesis are in the JavaScript. So, uh, for example, uh, like, you know, any any function, how do we call a function, right? So any function we want need to call, we'll say a is equal to function name and then pass some arguments to it. And to pass in the arguments, you usually use the parenthesis, uh, and and generally sometimes you may use the parenthesis to uh, perform the access attack. For example, in in this parenthesis, you would pass like you know access as payload, and which will eventually be evaluated and and executed on the client system or or like you know uh, victim's browser. So this is uh, what typical access uh, would do without any filtration. Now. As imagine like you know these are filtered uh, you cannot pass parenthesis or at least like you know uh, you try encoding and everything but you can still not do that so uh, and and your function will look like this access one two three and this does not make sense like of of course like when when this is sent to the uh, server that it's not going to be like you know considered as a function or as an argument and it's not going to work your payload is not going to be executed so luckily, there was a bypass technique, uh, I guess, uh, was found by uh, individual, and that was that actually uh, was really helpful. Uh, so what, how it works is, we, we're gonna use the on error handler, right? So Windows, uh, it's like you know, on error is part of the Windows object. Uh, we all know there are a lot of like you know event handler. So this is a Windows object. So what we're gonna do is we'll 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 assign a function. To call uh, once error has been generated and and using the throw statement. So uh, we all know like what the throw and catch is. So if you if you know any of the programming language, you know throw is to throw the exception, catch is to catch, and uh, uh, what you want to do uh, once you catch the exception. Uh, so that that's the whole throw catch uh, block is for. So we're gonna use the on error and throw uh, to do that, and then we'll also send the arguments to the function. Uh, to the error handler using the throw. So uh, this may sound a bit complicated, but it's not. Uh, so let me actually, uh, let's go to the next screen and, and see the example. So uh, what we're gonna do is, uh, let's say there is an image, uh, uh, like, you know, a tag, and then uh, on the source, we'll say on error. Of course, we're gonna pass in, like, you know, uh, some fake, uh, fake error or the fake, uh, path to the image, and we're gonna say window dot on error because on error is win Windows object. Uh, then we'll say is equal to equal uh, eval, and eval is the function to invoke in case error occurs, and in this case, 100% error is going to occur. Then throw will generate the error, and then this value alert and then some encoded value are the parameters for the error function, right? So. Uh, this is how. So f when you pass on this, uh, uh, this this is going to invoke the on error, and it will say, okay, now uh, call the eval function, and this is the uh, this is going to generate the like throw will generate the error, and these are the arguments. So simple version is on error is equal to alert and throw one, right? So this is uh, this was like encoded version. This is much simpler version. So you can use this. Now, it might not work on all the browsers, such as Firefox, so what you need to do is you can use the encoded version of it. So here, as you can see, um, this highlighted section is, is entirely encoded version. So you can encode and then still bypass some of the browser filters uh, if, if those are applicable. So this is like you know a short I guess session I wanted to cover uh, how to bypass the parenthesis filter filtration if it's uh, implemented by let's say application backend or maybe the WAF. So I think by far we have learned pretty much all the bypass techniques. So uh, do you implement those? Let me know if you uh, come across anything new which I might not be aware of. And we all we have also covered some other access techniques and full fledged access attacks outside of this series, so do check that out as well. And I'll see you guys next week. Thank you. Bye.